The latest data finds tropical Pacific Ocean temperatures are at a record high, warmer than back in 1997 when the last Super El Nino hit San Diego. Add a series of exceptionally high tides and the warm water blob, and what do we get this winter? Here with the answers are USGS and Scripps Institution of Oceanography climate researcher Dan Kayan and meteorologist Alex Tardy at NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And Alex, on Monday, Monday the National Weather Service said ocean temps temperatures are higher by 3 degrees Celsius or more than 5 degrees Fahrenheit. What does that tell us about El Nino and winter weather? Yeah, so what we do is every week we take a look at how strong the sea surface temperatures are in the heart of El Nino. And this week it came out at 3 Celsius, or like you said, over 5 Fahrenheit. That tells us that we've now passed 97, 98 in terms of weekly temperatures. We can't declare it as the strongest on record, though. We still got to wait a couple months because we average it all together. But what it tells us is the El Nino continues to grow in terms of strength, and it's there. So now it's a matter of when will we start seeing these storms. And Dan, I've read that around Thanksgiving and Christmas of this year, higher than usual tides are also expected in San Diego. What does that mean for people living in, say, Imperial Beach or La Jolla? Well, the uh, real issue is whether we'll get a big storm on top of those high tides coincident with. Uh, there is sort of a, a preliminary sign in the numerical forecast that Alex and I were just talking about that indicates we may see a storm this Thanksgiving period or slightly after. And, and so this really bears watching if we get uh, on top of the highest tides. We have an inflated sea level already of a little more than half a foot because of the warmer water and El Nino effect. And then if we get a big storm, of course, we get big waves. So that's uh, the prescription for a lot of, uh, of concern along the coastal area. Right, we're actually looking at some video from uh, years back of El Nino and it looks pretty uh, impressive there. And, um, but there's another ocean phenomena happening. And Dan, tell us about the so-called blob. What is it and how could it influence our weather? Well, we've had this warm water condition along the eastern Pacific, uh, both up north along the Pacific Northwest as well as along the California and Baja coast uh, for a year and perhaps as much as two years now. A lot of that was because of this pattern of very high pressure we had that was associated with this extreme dry condition that we had last winter and the winter before. We think that warm water may add a little of moisture to the storms that track in this winter, assuming they do, um, but it is not a primary cause of the winter weather. It's probably more of an effect of the previous winter. And in fact, it looks like that blob to some extent may be uh, diffusing so a So maybe bit. something we don't have to worry about. But Alex, speaking of the El Nino, it sounds like the prediction factor is going up a little bit on it. Uh, how many, are, are you, how much rain or snow are, could we expect from uh, El Nino if it does come our way? So with El Nino becoming as strong as it is now, like you described, we're running out of years to compare to, but similar to what we saw, 82, 83, 97, 98, we very likely could be looking at rainfall in that category, which means for us in San Diego, we start getting over 15 inches of rain. Our normal's around 10. So giving a range of 15 to 20 is, is, is a good possibility with this coming El Nino. The key will be, when that rain falls, if we distribute it real evenly or if we bring it all in a month or two time period, that'll be the big impact in terms of the runoff and the flooding. When do we expect the El Nino, at least the first series of the storms to start? We should start seeing storms in a strong El Nino in November and December, but the real whites of its eyes, so the majority of the storms, typically we've seen them hold off between January, February and March, so the latter half of the winter. And we'll have to end on this, Dan, because you, you seemed a little uncertain that you're not 100% convinced that we're going to get El Nino this year? Oh, no, I think we're definitely in for an El Nino, which is a tropical condition. The extra tropics, our weather is, is to some extent uh, a, a shotgun pattern when we look historically. One thing we can say, which Alex alluded to, the largest El Ninos have been very active winters, 82, 83, 97, 98. We'll see if this one holds up to those levels. If they do, uh, we could be in for a very wet winter. All right, Dan Kahn and Alex Tardy, thank you so much. Thank you.